good morning uh, everybody it's a great pleasure to be here um, and uh, i would like to introduce uh, uh, dr chandana mergu consultant endocrinologist for our next uh, talk at uh, premix insulins in the indian context dr chandana mergu uh, completed her uh, mbbs in afmc md general medicine in jipmer and uh, dm cardiology in jipmer uh, and um, uh, she is a consultant in endocrinology in aig hospitals pechigoli uh, her research interest include uh, diabetes bone endocrinology she is a, a member of indian medical association Endocrine Society of India, uh, Indian Thyroid Society, and RSSDI. Uh, she has published uh, ten. Med, uh, uh, she has had uh, ten publications in national and international journals. Received prizes in oral poster presentations in ASMBR conferences, and a research grant from Endocrine Society of India. Uh, I welcome Dr. Chandana to be your lecture. Thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. Good morning, all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Idea Clinics for inviting me for this conference. And after that intense discussion on Igla Lexi, I'm going to go back to what we have been using all these years. That's premix insulin. So, is premix insulin still relevant? We're going to talk about it and how relevant it is in Indian context. Okay. So, I'm going to talk about why Indian population is unique. and what are the risks associated with the postprandial uncontrolled glucose levels and how do we use insulin in indian context what are the guideline recommendations worldwide and indian guidelines also and we'll have a couple of discussion on cases so why are indian diabetic patients different if we look at the diabetic survey which was done in 2014 this was a start study this was a dietary survey which was done looking at patients uh, how they take carbs we see that the carb content of the indian population is pretty high most of us take about 64% of energy from the carb this is not common in the western population this is more relevant to the asian and more in indian population and indian versus caucasian multiple studies have done and they have looked at the hba1c which was as the hba1c goes higher they looked at which component whether the fasting blood glucose levels or the postprandial blood glucose which contribute more to the a1c if you look the studies from indian population as the a1c goes up it's the postprandial glucose which is the main contributor whereas in the caucasian population it's the fasting glucose which is the main contributor so we understand that the postprandial glucose levels are much higher in indian population and why do we need to be concerned about this We know that postprandial glucose levels have a lot of risk factors, mainly the cardiovascular risk. They can increase the carotid intima media thickness. There's a risk of increased myocardial blood flow reduction. There can be a decreased diastolic function. There's increased oxidative stress. The inflammatory markers increase. There's also an increased risk of pancreatic cancer with this. So we need to be concerned about this postprandial hyperglycemia. and not just because of these risks which increase there's also a risk of mortality the risk of mortality also increases as the postprandial glucose levels increase with the same fasting glucose levels as the postprandial levels increase the mortality risk worsens much more and this is an independent marker for that and when we are looking for the glycemic control when we are looking at a good hb1c control only controlling a1c does not bring the a1c sorry only controlling the fasting blood glucose levels does not bring down the a1c but when we concentrating on the postprandial glucose levels when we try to bring down the postprandial glucose levels under control that's when our a1c levels also come under control and they come less than 7 and how do we use in insulin in our indian context so as you all would have experience initiating insulin is very difficult there is one inertia from the doctor side and also not just that there's an inertia from the patient side also most of them are very reluctant to start that so usually what we try to do is we just try to intensify the oads increase the doses of oads increase the number of oads instead of starting the patient on insulin unless the a1c is very high we do not go for insulin initiation 
This is not right actually because early initiation of insulin when needed can prevent a lot of complications. There are multiple uh, insulins which are available in the market. I'll be just talking about a few formulations. The human insulin which were there earlier, then we have the analogs. The human insulins were the short acting, the regular insulin. Then we had the intermediate acting which is NPH, then the long acting. Uh, then, then we have the premix in the human insulins. Then the analogs. We commonly use analogs these days. They could be either rapid acting or the long acting or the ultra long acting and also the premix. So I'm sure you all know about all these. So how do we go about using insulin? What are the guideline recommendations? Do we start insulin as a basal insulin or a premix or a basal bolus? How do we start insulin in type 2 diabetes specifically I'm talking about? So most of the guidelines suggest that we should start with basal insulin alone in addition to OADs when the patient has A1C more than 9. The ADA, the ASE, the IDF, the Canadian guidelines, all this suggest that we should start with basal insulin alone and then escalate, intensify as needed. Whereas other guidelines like the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence or as the RSSDI India, some guidelines from Australia, these all suggest that we can either start the patient on basal insulin or a premix insulin or co-formulations like what we were talking about just now as we can decide upon the patient, particular patient. So this is again the guidelines which they suggested, the ADA, ADA, ASD, and the Canada guidelines, all these suggest that we should start with basal alone. But the ASE, they say sometimes we can consider a premix. So when do we think of premix? Let's look at the NICE guidelines. What do they suggest? They suggest that we can start the patient on uh, premix if the patient prefers taking a me insulin just before the meal if the patient has glucose levels which rise markedly after the meal so in such situations we can consider putting the patient on a premix the RSSDI guidelines these also suggest that we can start the patient either on a basal insulin or we can start the patient on a premix the other guidelines also say that we can start on combination. Okay, so when do we choose a premix? What exactly are the conditions where we choose a premix? The premix we usually choose if the increment, the post meal increment is more than 54 mg per DL. That means the pre meal is low, but when some patient has a meal, which usually in Indian population is a high carb meal, then the post Prandial glucose levels, if they are very high, that means the patient needs a bolus dose at that time. A basal will not take care of it. So we need to add on a premix for this patient. In, if the fasting and HbA1c ratio is less than 20, that also means that the fast, controlling the fasting glucose is not taking care of the HbA1c. And sometimes we have the psychological factors also. Patient, like if we want the patient to be on basal bolus, three times bolus with a basal, most of them would be very reluctant to start on it. So making it more simpler, although it's a fixed ratio, we can have a better control with that. We can put the patient on premix, especially elderly. They won't prefer to take multiple injections in a day. So in such patients, putting them on a premix might be a wise addition. And this is again the repetition of that. So again, depending on the patient's lifestyle, the choice and how the postprandial glucose levels are. And usually as the duration of diabetes increases, most of the OADs, the sulfonylureas do not work well in such patients. So we usually try to replace the sulfonylureas with the premix insulin. So as I was saying, when the increment is very high, more than 54 mg per DL, if the patient is not able to manage on basal bolus, if there's a very high carb intake, usually in one meal of the day. And we know that, yes, patient has a routine. This is the normal routine. The patient takes meals, a fixed routine. Then we can consider putting a premix and adjusting the doses as needed. So there were multiple studies which were done. This meta-analysis, which was comparing premix with uh, basal insulin, they showed that the difference in A1C was not much. The patient would do well on premix also. So... Choosing, again, depends on what are the patient's requirements. We look at the patient, see what patient's medications are already there, how high is the A1C, what is the postprandial glucose levels, and then we decide whether to put a patient on a high-mix insulin that is more of bolus compared to basal or a low-mix insulin which is less 
bolus with high basal or only basal. So let's discuss a couple of case studies. So when do we start premix in a patient? So this is a 52-year-old lady who was type 2 diabetes for the past few years. A1C is 9.3, which is uncontrolled, and other parameters are decently fine, and with a little hyperlipidemia. She's already on multiple OADs, and she has a history of UTI. So if she has a history of UTI in the recent past, we usually avoid SGLT2 inhibitors. So what else can we do? She's already on citagliptin, glimipiride, and also on metformin. Already three OADs are going on for her. And how do we go about going, deciding what to do for her? And she's an Indian homemaker who usually takes high-carb diet. So the studies with premix versus insulin glargine plus metformin, they have shown that there's a better reduction in A1C with the premix compared to glargine. Also, the risk of hypoglycemia is lesser compared to the basal, even the overall hypoglycemia or the nocturnal hypoglycemia also. So this patient was started on a premix along with whatever medication she was taking. And later, once she was stabilized on the premix, her sulfonylurea was also stopped. And she continued to have a very good glycemic control. So putting a premix in the morning and evening, especially when they take the high carb diet, that helps in bringing down the glucose levels. So how do we go about intensifying insulin in patients who are on premix already? So this is another patient who is 68-year-old male, uh, for diabetic for the past 15 years. He's on metformin, vildagriptin, glimipiride, and also a low mix, the mix 25, premix 25. So again, in spite of being on a premix, his glucose levels are not controlled. His A1C is 9.2. What do we do for this patient? If you look at the glucose charting which was done, the six-point glucose charting which was done, we can see that the the excursion which is happening at the breakfast time is about 100. So in spite of taking a mix which is 25 with 25% of bolus with 75% basal, there is high glucose levels post meal. That means he needs more of bolus in the breakfast time. And if you look at the before dinner versus the after dinner values also, there is also there is a high excursion in the glucose levels. So he needs another insulin at that point, but the excursion is not very high. So what do we do for this patient? So let's look at how we can change. So the mix we can put premix of 50, which has basal 50 with bolus 50, and we can see that the glycemic control is much better. And the nocturnal hypoglycemia risk is also not usually much high with these patients. So in this patient, since we realize that the glucose excursion in the breakfast time is much higher, we can put a premix 50 in the morning and premix 25 in the evening because we don't want a hypoglycemia at night and titrate the doses as needed for the patient. And once the patient is stabilized, we can continue that. And this patient after three months was found that the A1C had come down to 7.4. So we understand that yes, Indian population premix has still a major role. Although basal is the one which is usually recommended, but in case we understand because of the postprandial glucose levels, it's better to start a patient on premix at least once a day and then escalate it to twice a day as needed. To summarize, uh, the postprandial glucose levels uh, have a significant contribution, especially in Indian population. Premix are very simpler to use compared to basal bolus, and Patients who are already on OADs, multiple OADs, initiating on a premix will add on to the glycemic control. And it's usually simple enough, even the elderly, we can explain them and it can initiate easily. And it's very convenient. Thank you all for patient listening.